Happy New Year to you. Thank you very much for joining us. This is Nationwide. I'm Ruth Aguele. President Muhammad Buhari has congratulated Nigerians on the occasion of the New Year, talking about 2023. In a message, the president said the New Year provides opportunity to reflect on the outgoing year and reposition for the new one. Being his valedictory New Year message, President Buhari noted that the 2023 general elections creates a chance to choose new leaders. He expressed the belief that the nation would remain a one indivisible entity, uniquely blessed by God, enjoining citizens to collaborate with government in stamping out those who want to bring down the nation. He said daily victories have been recorded against insurgents across Nigeria. With the return of IDPs to their central homes and more than 82,000 insurgents renouncing terrorism. Also, security, um, a security roadmap is in place based on building trusts, promoting community policing for crime reduction. President Buhari added that Nigeria has been able to weather the global economic crisis despite COVID 19's after effect, providing subsidized energy to reduce inflation. In this regard, jobs are being created amidst sustained fight against corruption, and the president prayed that the next president will also pick up the button and continue the race to make Nigeria one of the leading countries of the world by the end of the century. Similarly, President of the Senate Ahmed Lawan has congratulated Nigerians on the occasion of celebration of the New Year, talking about 2023. In a message, the President of the Senate said the Ninth National Assembly has kept faith with Nigerians and unwavering in implementing its legislative agenda. He urged Nigerians to keep faith with the administration's efforts at building a viral nation. Meanwhile, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabi Amila, has greeted Christian faithful and indeed all Nigerians on the New Year celebration. He enjoins citizens to make the most of the year by going to the polls to elect credible people to lead them. Similarly, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, has felicitated with Nigerians as the New Year is ushered in. The SGF prayed for peace, unity and harmony for the fulfillment of national aspirations. And the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, has felicitated with Nigerians as they celebrate the New Year. Atiku Abubakar described 2023 as a defining moment for Nigeria with opportunities for building a united and strong country. On behalf of the PDP, the former vice president urged Nigerians to look forward with hope and faith. Also, presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu, has saluted Nigerians on the New Year celebrations. Tinubu described the period as one for keeping hope alive as the nation elects new leaders to take Nigeria to the promised land. He enjoined citizens to support the electoral process by collecting their PVCs and ensuring their vote. Presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter Obi, has also urged Nigerians to unite their efforts in the journey of taking back the nation from corruption, insecurity and unproductivity. In his New Year message, Obi reminded Nigerians that 2023 is a critical year that will determine the next direction of the nation. In the same vein, Court Marshal of the Federal Road Safety Corps, Dauda Alibiu, has urged the motoring public to sustain the collective vigilance against road traffic crashes as the nation enters 2023. In the New Year message, the Court Marshal called for more efforts at consolidating the gains of the campaign on safe motoring. 
Well, you know, New Year Eve, talking about yesterday, is usually characterized by a variety of activities cutting across tribes, tongues, and religions. While some party into the New Year, you know, some opt for prayers, just as others simply soothe themselves on the night, be it socially or spiritually. Olusheye Adiagbo captured the mood in the Federal Capital Territory. Fireworks rent the hair in different shapes and forms, signaling the end of 2022 and the dawn of 2023. Millions of people stay awake just to see the clock tick past 12 midnight and announcing the new year. At the Central Park, central area of the LCC, the moment is eroded with palpable joy as the people express optimism that 2023 will be better than the preceding year. I feel very happy. Amazing people, very amazing city, and we hope all the best for the next year for Nigeria. The way from the social to the spiritual, for these Christians, it is a time to acknowledge the faithfulness of God over the past 365 days and for the gift of life to witness yet another new year. God has kept you not because you are without faith, not there is anything special about you, but you are a product of mercy. 2023 being another year of democratic transition. For Nigeria, clerics at the worship center's visitors say the year should be seen as a fresh encounter. And there's a reassurance in the inside of us, which I also want to say to Nigerians, that let's have hope that by the grace of God, 2023 will be better than 2022. Go out to vote. Vote your conscience. In the next four years, who do you think can lead this country to a greater height, to a better direction? Vote that person. The crossover night services were also characterized with special renditions of soul lifting sounds as the congregation prayed to God to make things right in Nigeria and for Nigerians in 2023. News. Nigerians have been urged to pray for supernatural strength to overcome hurdles as they journey through the year 2023. Now, this message dominated sermons in New Year church services in Abuja, emphasizing God's grace and steadfastness as a path to building a stronger nation. 2022 has come and gone with its ups and downs, but for many, who made it to 2023, the first thing is to thank God for the grace that ushered them into the new year. And we pray that all Nigerians who should pray to one another, who should live in peace with one another. We're going to shine forth our light. Even in this nation, we are going to make the difference and affect our generation positively for Christ. 2023 election, we are going to get a leader that is more committed to us the development of this country. From the First Baptist Church, Garki, Catholic Archdiocese of Abuja, Church of the Assumption, Asokoro, to Methodist Church, we say, and other churches in Abuja, clergy hinge their messages on seeking supernatural strength for Nigeria to cross every hurdle. The threat of war, the threat of the election not even holding, people not sure. But then in all this, God is telling us that he is our refuge. Make sure that we we'll stay on the Lord's side. And as the Lord is going with us, he will give us rest on every side. Your efforts are not wasted. Your efforts are not lost. This is the year of the fullness of time when God has decided he is going to lift his people up supernaturally. He is going to make everything possible. For many, a low inflection and making right choices during the general elections to build a peaceful and stronger economy, top their wishes, and these again they believe will come only with the grace of God. In Abuja, Joseph Utsen, NTA News. 
As Nigerians kept vigil to OSHA in the new year 2023, the family of Victor Uchenna also welcomed their baby delivered at 12 midnight by Nurse Stelato Idris of Kuba General Hospital. Hawaiian by reports that both mother and baby are doing just fine. Tradition annually to search for the baby of the year. So, this year, our search took us to Kuba General Hospital, where baby Uguata was delivered. He weighs 3.2 kg. He came in around 10.30 with a cervical dilatation of 5 cm, which we monitored her till at that point. It was as if the child was just waiting for that time. I am um, overwhelmed with joy. I, I was like... In fact, there were tears of joy everywhere. Chief Medical Director, Kubo General Hospital, Muidin Lassisi, says they are happy to receive this gift. They commended government efforts in ensuring that necessary facilities are put in place to achieve their vision. We try to choose the exact hour of the beginning or commencement of a new year. The exact hour is not something any man can plan. So this is really wonderful uh, for us. And then to also know all the good things that comes with that. We are really very delighted to be part of it. Baby Uguata is the third child of his parents. Hawagimba NTA New. Bundle of joy to start the year is always a blessing. Nigerians have been urged to approach the new year with hope, determination and prayers as the new year will present opportunities for economic turnaround and massive transformation in all sectors. This is the advice given by some opinion, opinion leaders in Makodi Benue State during the new year celebration. Let's hear the details from Moses Ode. Nigeria, like any other nations of the world, has had its fair share of economic relapse in the year 2022. Opinion leaders in Makudi are optimistic the nation is a work in progress. We shouldn't be worried. God is on the throne. Jesus Christ is sitting right on the throne of Nigeria. He's going to prepare this country himself. He's going to correct the wrongs. He's going to take care of insecurity. And he's going to bring, restore hope in the minds of Nigerians. We don't want to create more crisis. And that's why we are pleading with all of us. All of us. Put your interests behind and put the interests of this nation first. They appear to well many Nigerians to rededicate themselves to rebuilding the nation, especially as it enters into electioneering year. In Makudi, Moses Udi, NTA News. All right, it's a brand new year, which we're all trying to acclimatize ourselves to. But usually one thing stands out, expectations for the new year. And we have a guest in the studio that will be sharing, sharing with us, you know, the expectations for Nigerians, you and me, for the new year. I have the lead pastor of the Transforming Church, Reverend Sam Oye, um, also a leadership coach. Thank you very much, <laughs> Reverend, for joining us. Such an honor to be here with you. Happy New Year. Thank you so very much, and I wish you the very best. Thank you. You look bright and uh, Thank you. I love what you do. Thank you very much. And of course, it's a brand new year. I'm sure you have your expectations. I do. <laughs> and Nigerians, you know, on a larger picture have, you know, a lot of expectations they expect for the country in terms of growth and all of that. But how significant would you say is a day like this? Well, I believe uh, a day like this provides us with an opportunity to um, learn from the past. Um, what has the year before, what what did he afford us and um, what lessons have we learned? And on a day like this, we want to look into the year that we've just come into and say, based on the things we learned in the year that's just come to an end, how do we reprogram, restructure, reposition ourselves for a year that we desire to see some of the dreams of our hearts. So I believe that a time like this affords us the opportunity to reprogram, restructure, replan, and position ourselves for something better. So 
I think it gives people an opportunity to start on a clean slate. And when you talk about restructure, reposition, <laughs> um, one thing that comes to mind, resolution. This is the time people just draw yeah. plans and resolutions. Oh, this is what I want to achieve this year. But what does it take, you know, starting afresh, if you want your resolutions to come alive for the year? They say if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. Absolutely. Okay. Well, the, the first thing I'd like to say is that um, to make a resolution, without a resolution to make the resolution come to pass <laughs> okay, is like the that. reason why many <laughs> resolutions never come to pass so having a plan is not enough but planning is the beginning of winning if you're ever going to win in any major significant um, you know venture of life you need to plan so planning is the beginning of winning mm. but planning in itself does not guarantee winning without determination yeah there must be the determination the courage and grit you need to make sure you sustain your passion for a long time and there must be that resilience the capacity to bounce back when you fail because in the pursuit of your vision your goals you're going to meet with some obstacles along the path so usually a lot of people write down the vision but they don't also prepare for moments when things may not go the way you plan and you may need to come back to the drawing board and say hey listen i thought it was going to be straight from a to b hmm. but now i'm beginning to discover that there are obstacles in between how do you develop the courage how do you develop the capacity to be able to stay through to the very destination you are set out to accomplish in the first place so I believe that putting down your goals is the beginning. Having a clear plan on how you're going to accomplish it is very critical. But things don't always go according to plan. So we say you need to be tactical, not necessarily be, strategic. Yes, you need to show commitment. And I know one strategic um, resolution for Nigerians is the breath of a new administration, which we're all looking for. Yes. You're talking about the election. Yes. Now, um, as we approach the month, um, this is our electioneering year. What should be your recommendations, you know, in terms of ensuring that we're all coordinated as a people to ensure we have a peaceful election? I, I love the last word you used, peaceful election. Uh, peace is the atmosphere wherein freedom finds expression. So I would say, of all things, we must all commit ourselves to pursuing and ensuring peace. Because without peace, we can't do so much. So we all need to commit ourselves. The political parties, the leaders of the political parties must ensure over the next one to two months that the rhetorics, the words we speak, the kind of statements we make are such that they do not have the potential to steer Overtly or overtly, they do not have the potential to steer some form of conflict, wars yes. in our midst. Because we can only vote in a peaceful environment. So I will say very quickly that peace is what we must all pursue if we want to enjoy the freedom that we all seek. Peace is what we must all pursue. And which falls on your purview as a man of God, both <laughs> Christian or Muslim, um, that's something you also have a role to play. What Absolutely. should clerics, you know, be telling their followers? I, I think it's important for those of us who are clerics, it's important for us to know that we are Nigerians, so we have our individual, you know, inclinations to whatever party we think we have some kind of uh, sentimental affiliation towards. But I think it's important for clerics to make sure that when you have that opportunity to be on your platform, you want to remember first you're a Nigerian and you want to speak to your people to go and exercise their free will. We don't use our position, we don't use our privileges and powers to, so to say, influence the people towards a particular political party okay. because then we are not fostering the atmosphere of peace we begin to create division right in the midst of the people so i would say clerics our okay. assignment should be to foster the atmosphere of peace 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 from the pulpit to the pew all right peace Indeed. Thank you so much, Reverend Sam Oye. And let the great grace of God be upon Nigeria this year. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I pray that the great grace of God will be upon Nigeria. Thank you very much for your time. And we wish you a beautiful new year. Thank you so very much. Great work you do. All right. Okay, let's head to Lagos now to join Hingino. Hingino, happy new year. What's happening at your end? Happy new year to Ruth. And happy new year, Nigeria.
It is a tradition for Christians to worship on New Year Day, and the first day of 2023 was not different. The message of hope, peace, faith, and commitment to God dominated New Year services held in Lagos. Our correspondent, who attended some church services, tells us more. This is the joy of seeing a new year. They are praising God with various dance steps as a way of thanking him for his love and mercies all through 2022 and keeping them among the living in 2023. The mood of worship also enveloped the atmosphere as worshippers in various churches visited are not taking the goodness of God throughout the past year for granted. The first day of the year also witnessed rededication of faith, prayer for the new year, and the nation. Apart from faith, hope, and peace, the clerics also emphasized the need to seek for wisdom, hinging on Genesis 27, verse 39 to 40. Let's build a nation, a great nation, a wonderful nation, where no man will be oppressed. There's space for everyone, and I believe in Nigeria, and I know Nigeria will be great again. When you sit down and think deep, you will know that God is truly worthy of thanksgiving. For the worshippers who were gorgeously dressed, depicting their mood, the messages that came from the pulpits have renewed their faith, and they're looking forward to a peaceful year. Just want to be in and see what god has for us even as we as individual we're going to do our own part but like i was telling somebody this morning let's see what god had for this nation trust in god that this year will deliver to me every god says he daily loads us with benefits that every single benefit that god has loaded this year will be released to me as the worshippers wished themselves a happy new year they are optimistic that 2023 will deliver good tidings into their lives and the nation. Although this year's Christmas has come and gone, memories of the Yuletide which refers to Christmas time are still in the hearts of many. In this report, Diana Ajali captures echoes of this year's Yuletide. Globally, the month of December is significant in the Christian calendar. From the armor decorations to the shopping sprees and general preparations, indeed, the month of December is a busy one. The common purpose is to use the power of music for the season and Thanksgiving to send a message to Nigerians that, with oneness, all challenges are surmountable. We are celebrating uh, a Messiah. We are celebrating uh, our God. So that is what is important to me. Oh, we're thanking God for his faithfulness and his mercy. From the various songs, ministration and drama presentation, the message is clear. Gratitude to God invites God's presence. That when you thank God, it brings peace into your heart. This is time for you to hold yourself strong. Believe God, be hardworking, be committed, be ethical as well, and then you will see things working out for you. The people demanded dedication from all Nigerians to pray and contribute their quota from their various sectors to ensure that Nigeria is more peaceful in the incoming year. <laughs> In Lagos, Diana Ajale, NTA News. You're still watching Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. Do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on our other social media handles displayed on your screen for updates. Let's take some messages. The news will be back shortly with Ruth in Abuja. Welcome back. Nigerian pilgrims are in Jordan and Jerusalem to join the rest of the globe, global Christian community to perform the 2022 pilgrimage to the Holy Land. And about 280 pilgrims have already been airlifted from Yola. Adeni Taiwo reports. These are some of the pictures 
already emerging from Jerusalem, where Christian pilgrims who departed Nigeria on Tuesday, December 27, are currently settling down to perform this year's pilgrimage to the Holy Land of Israel and Jordan. Out of a total of 10,000 pilgrims scheduled to go on the trip this year, the first batch of 300 departed Akanu Ibiam Airport, Enugu, on December 16, while the 280 airlifted from Vila International Airport make up the second batch. Apostle Abiodun Soyalu is not on the pilgrimage this year. But after about 22 pilgrimages to the Holy Land, their former chairman, Ogun State Christian Pilgrims Board, still have reminiscences of the dietary culture and others. What we learned in doing is that you will brought vehicles that will take us. Once you pay your money here, in fact, if you don't have one that with them, you will still accomplish that thing. Because when you get there, the gardeners will have made a regiment for your transportation. Air conditioning boxes. There's no, no big man, no small man. The opportunity to walk, touch, and get a feel of where the Lord Jesus and other notable characters in the Bible had their earthly ministry is one that Pastor Walidu Sumo will cherish for a long time to come. So I must confess that um, the experience at the Wailing Wall was something that I will remember for a long, long time. Because I asked specifically for uh, a prayer point. And before I returned, uh, I received the answer. In 2022, no pilgrim has absconded. A happy executive secretary of the Nigeria Christian Pilgrims Commission, Reverend Yakubu Pam, says the commission is offering pilgrims the best of logistic support. Yes, Nigerians are our ground handlers with Israeli partners who are making sure that everything is moving successfully over there in our host country. More thrilling for the pilgrims this year is an opportunity to explore holy sites in Jordan, even as the commission works towards including Turkey as part of the pilgrimage in the future. The commission was established in 2007 to provide smooth airlifting of pilgrims to holy sites, as well as ensure enhanced welfare for them. In Lagos, Adini Itaibu, NC News. The Nigerian Air Force has reiterated its commitment to maintain high standards in securing the sovereignty of the country as it acknowledges unity as a key element in nation building. The commander, 013 Quick Response Force, Nigerian Air Force MENA, Air Commodore Elisha Philip Bindo, gave this indication during the commemoration of the 2022 base annual socio cultural activities named as BASA in. Mina Fatima Usman reports. The base annual social cultural activity, also known as BASA, is an age long tradition of the Nigerian Air Force held annually to strengthen the bond among its personnel through unity in diversity, promote civil military relationship. It is also a day set aside to strengthen family ties through social cultural activities. In commemorating the day, the 013 Quick Response Force, Nigerian Air Force MENA, had its personnel alongside family members, friends, gather to have fun. A bond from this social cultural expression is applied in effect to various cultural endowments. It will also ensure sustenance of our culture as well as transfer of culture from one generation to another. On days like this, officers and men of the Nigerian Air Force add on their respective cultural attires in solidarity as they acknowledge their commitment to securing the nation. In Mina, I am Fatima Usman, NTA News. Essential Muhammad Buhari, the one hour documentary about President Muhammad Buhari, his mind, life, and philosophy, will start showing on TV stations across the country and on YouTube. It's a movie portrait of the president, told in his own words and by some family members, friends, and associates. It will be shown on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. this Sunday, 1st January. Please 
please keep a date with us. Women and youth have been urged to continue to have faith in the ruling APC and support the party to retain power at all levels at the forthcoming polls. APC Deputy National Women Leader Zainab Awakar Ibrahim made the call at the women's stakeholders engagement in Kasina. Awal Haliru reports. The Women's Stakeholders Engagement is part of the tour to the Northern States by the Deputy National Women Leader of the APC. She is in Katana to sensitize women and convert support for the APC presidential candidate Bola Ahmed Tinubu and all other candidates of the party during the forthcoming general elections. The Deputy National Women Leader notes that the APC has done well as government in terms of social investment programs. She expressed satisfaction with the level of awareness and acceptance of the party in Katana State. Katana is APC. From what you can see, all the women have agreed that they will vote only for APC across the board because President Muhammad Buhari has done so well and they know the citizens of Bola, Metinibu and Kashim Shatima and they also know Dikorata, he is their son. And so they know what he can do and they have all promised and you know when women promise they fulfill their promises and so we believe that we are going to sweep Katsina clean. Wife of the state governor Hadiz Aminu Masari spoke on the credibility of the APC's candidates and called on Nigerians to vote for the party. Other speakers appealed to women in the state to vote for the party's candidates for sustainable development. In Katsina, Awan Haleru, NTA News. Ahead of the 2023 general elections, eligible voters in Makodi have defied the festive period to queue up at the State Independent Electoral Commission offices in Makodi State to collect their permanent voters' cards. Moses Ode reports. There has been a beehive of activities at the office complex of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Benue State, as eligible voters continue to troop to the office complex to collect their permanent voters' card ahead of the general election. The Commission in its wisdom has decided that because Makoti is a metropolitan local government and the, it has a lot of uh, people who have purchased that, and the Commission decided that People who are across the bridge, that is uh, River Bayway, should go to our North Bank area office at Yagba to collect their PVCs. And those who are this side of the bridge should come to the INEC head office in Makodi to collect their PVCs. Mr. Andia advised those who are yet to receive their permanent voters card to do so to avoid last minute rush. Some eligible voters applauded the commission for its relentlessness in the distribution of PVCs. Uh, well, it's a normal process. You know, during the Utah season, people travel and still some hang around to take their own power. Some are married, I never vote. But this time around, I know that I will vote. So I'm very happy. I'm so glad that now I can vote. I'm free to vote. The distribution of the permanent voters card will be devolved to the registration areas, also known as council wards, between 6th of January to 15th of January 2023. In Makudi, Moses Ude, NTA News. The Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority is warning operators in the down and midstream that defaulters violating the operational guidelines will have their licenses revoked. The Authority Chief Executive Farouk Ahmed told journalists in Abuja that the shutting down of the 14 depots across the country is meant to strengthen the market. Lydia Sampson reports. Farouk Ahmed found that what he called market pump price gone up beyond reason. He retreats that the authority will sustain the clamp down. Seven depots that were, were shut. Uh, we looked at also the distribution, the availability in other depots within the zones. And we realized that yes, even though we showed those depots, the effect on the supply within that zone is not going to be significantly affected. It will also help us for those who are holding to bring it out because the next level is to go and start checking all the tanks in both petrol stations and in the depots to ensure that there are no marketer or no retailer is putting the product. And they must understand that once they breach the uh, regulation or regulatory requirement is a revocation of their license. 
He says the clampdown on some depots and petrol stations is not to hunt any organization. He gave an assurance that there is 30 days product sufficiency in country and that there is no cause for alarm as the Yuletide and beyond motorists will experience seamless product access and availability. In Abuja Media, Samson, NTA News. The NNPC Limited, Tantita Security Services Limited, and security agencies have intercepted a badge and truck with stolen crude oil in Wari Delta State. Leader Samson again reports that about 300,000 liters of crude oil and 210,000 liters of diesel were found on board of the barge. <laughs> The long flat bottom boat, also known as Parge, called Mim Breathing, was discovered to be unregistered and undocumented with the appropriate authorities. The barge was intercepted alongside with a large wooden canoe for conveying illegally refined AGU as well as a locally built wooden tug. Uh, just at the tip of uh, border town between Delta State and Bayelsa State, near the Transrumors uh, pipeline. Good. So. They got a locally made talk to push them deep into the bush where they loaded AGU legally refined and at the same time got their pipelines to take crude. Four suspects were arrested on board the barge. They came to meet me that I need a boat to, to buy food stuff. Oh, my mama sent me a message. Christopher, I sent me a message to the barge to our work about the diesel barge and the crude oil. This is where illegal crude oil is being siphoned and they have a lot of processes, the tank where it is refined and sold it as diesel to unsuspecting users at the petrol station outside. From the outside, when you see the petrol station, it's difficult to even assume the magnitude of what is happening within from here. The second discovery is an unregistered truck loaded with crude oil apprehended in the early hours of December 10, 2022. Discharging is in legal content into the underground storage tanks of a filling station located opposite Ascham Hotel, operating one. We've placed our eyes on a lot of fuel stations around this town and other places because we know that uh, these are part of the problems we have. Personnel of the Nigerian Army 3rd Battalion in Wari had secured the location and the trucks used for the operation. Meanwhile, the petrol station was demolished to serve as a deterrent to crude oil thieves and illegal refineries. The private security contractor had arrested another four male suspect in connection with the discovery and recovered two foil pumping machines used for the operation. The IGP tax force on pipeline vandalism attached to the PPMC depot in Norway had accused the petrol station of similar incident in 2019. From Worry Delta State, Media Sams in TA News. All right, we'll make another stop this time just where we join Felicia. Felicia, good to see you this brand new year. Thank you and welcome to Joss. Nigerians are expressing optimism of improvements in their socio-economic lives as the new year begins. Ijoma Zemina sampled the opinions of residents of Jos. New Year resolution is a tradition where people reflect on their activities in the previous year and resolve to discontinue a practice and adopt a new posture. My new year resolution is to, let me see, to work hard and also believe in God and put all my hope and trust in God and also to say my prayers because I, I, I noticed that without prayers we are going nowhere. Have a, a fulfilled uh, destiny just uh, the way I've planned my life to be. I'm going to live a holy life by living happily and then loving my neighbors, my children, my parents, and everyone around me. Others express optimism that the new year will usher in robust economic fortunes that will turn around the country positively. Eventually, just to pray for myself, my family, and the country generally that 2023 will be a fruitful year for every Nigerian. I, I know I have expectations in life. All my expectations, I always put my trust in God. Believing that he will answer my prayers. 
and we wish that the new year will be more better and we're hoping god that everything that this new year shall be a year of testimony a year of breakthrough a year of favor we urge nigerians to make meaningful contributions to our successful conduct of the 2023 general pools as they approach the year with hope determination and prayers in jos in Jonah or Zemina, nta news the federal government has indicated its readiness to complete Panshing Makeri power projects to alleviate the hardship experienced by communities along the axis. This was when Governor Simon Lalong received management of Transmission Company of Nigeria and the JOS Electricity Distribution Company in JOS. Priscilla Groman has details. The 132 KVA power line project linking Panchin Makiri to Guratop was awarded 10 years ago by the federal government to meet the power needs of citizens, which will impact about 14 local government areas of Plata State. Leader of the delegation, Shewo Aliu, informs Governor Lalong that the team is in Plata State on a supervision visit to the power sites following a matching order by the Minister of Power to ensure completion of the power project within three months. Price variation and harmonization of outstanding work between TCN and the contractor MOGAPS has been resolved. Already, the new FGA appropriation has been fully provided. Materials to be imported for the completion of this project are already on ground. Governor Simon Lalong commends the Buhari led administration for ensuring that Plata State benefits from the power project and for the efforts by TCN towards the realization of the project. The team then proceeds to the Panshin, Makiri, and Guratop power station in Jos, Priscilla, Rubnan, NTA News. And that's it from in Jaws Benin. Nationwide continues in Benin with Jaws Agatha after this break. In Benin with Jaws Agatha Benin. after this break. <laughs> Thank you for staying on Nationwide and Happy New Year from Benin. Our Governor Godwin Obaseke is thankful to the people of Edo State who in the face of daunting difficulties have been able to sustain themselves. The Governor in his New Year message pledged to create a vibrant electricity market in the state to encourage investors to invest in generation and distribution of the grid. This year's specs will ultimately enhance investments in Azura and Osiomo power projects. Elizabeth Omoko reports. Even though the world economy has been challenged by disruptions, the local state economy has been undermined by its own specific anxieties. This has unraveled as galloping inflation, volatile exchange rates, and increased insecurity. Governor Basaki says that in reaction to the negative hostile impact, his administration in the past six years has been laying the foundation for his economic resurgence through far reaching reforms. We are transitioning Edo from a civil service dominated state to one which is attractive manufacturing, commercial, agricultural concerns, services, and technology companies, and several small and medium enterprises. Quite a number of jobs are currently being created from several opportunities in the state's agricultural sector, such as the Edo State Oil Palm Program, ESOP, our cassava to ethanol initiatives, forestry plantations, and also in poultry production. He reviews plans to establish an Edo Electricity Commission. We will be creating a vibrant electricity market in the state to allow and encourage investors to invest in generation and distribution of grid and off-grid electric power so that we can expand the investments in Azura Power and Osiomo Power projects. The governor urges all to join hands with a state government to develop communities and play their parts in making a door great again. In Benin, Elizabeth Omoko, NT News. And people of Ekiti State are calling for the implementation of policies that will enhance the well-being of Nigerians in 
2023. They made the call in Adoikiti while speaking on their expectations from the new year. Kende Dorodola reports. People are always excited to witness the first day of every year after conquering the previous one. One of the features of every new year is people's expectations from God themselves and the nation. 2023 being the year selected for the general elections, the people of Ekiti State have expectations from government and the electoral umpire, INEC, to conduct the elections in a manner that will be acceptable by all while calling on the electorate to allow God to direct them in the choice of their preferred candidate. They also want government at all levels to implement policies that will better the lot of Nigerians. Let our leaders follow God, let them fear God, and God will teach them what They should think about the people, their government, and so that they should meet their needs and take care of them. And we must be a child of obedience to the people that we are elected into the offices in this nation. I want the government, the people in authority, to be more sincere with the electorate. They submitted that if everyone plays his or her expected roles, the country will be a better place in 2023 and beyond. In Adokiti, Kendi NTA News. That's it here. Ruth has the rest of Nationwide. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Agatha. I'm sure that's what you wanted to say. Welcome back to Abuja. Residents of Potakot joined their counterparts across the country to gather in worship centers to appreciate God, faithfulness in the new year. Gabriel Amunike reports. <laughs> At the not choosing charismatic church headquarters, Port Harcourt, Pastor Timothy Obona admonished Christians to exercise faith in the sacrificial power of Jesus Christ to gain life eternal. <laughs> Reverend Simeon Okeke of Overcomers Church, Broad Outreach, and Pastor Lanwe Onusheye of House on the Rock called on Christians to conquer sin, have confidence in themselves, serve God in 2023 if they truly expect a better result. The presence of God rub off on us, and that presence of God will carry a back preserve protect us from every aspect of this of the devil and his cohorts so this year i encourage christians to walk in power the same god who was able to feed five thousand with five loaves and two feet what is this storm that he cannot quell are, are you still here church services featured singing prayers and thanksgiving gabriel and Nikki, NTA. All right, that's where we call it a day for Nationwide. Thank you very much for your time. As you go out to celebrate the new year, do stay safe. I'm Ruth Aguene. Bye. <laughs>